Chair Beinert is wrong. He wrote a new book called The Crisis of Zionism, which uh, I read a review of it by Jordan Hirsch, who says that he largely walks back his theory of political distancing in the crisis of Zionism and directly contradicts his article in the New York Review of Books. Uh, that article, he basically talked about how Israeli policies were alienating young Jews from Israel. And in this book, he, he finally agrees with the sociologists who said that the vast majority of American Jews whose ties to Israel are weakening are weakening because of intermarriage, not because of politics. That is to say that the intermarriage rate being roughly 50 percent, the harsh truth is that for many young non-Orthodox American Jews, Israel isn't that important because being Jewish is not that important. The sociologists further go on to say that as Jews get older, they tend to be more supportive of Israel. And uh, he's not taking into account the massively successful birthright rate trip, which uh, hundreds of thousands of Jewish kids have gone on. And years later, when they do follow up, Israel becomes very important to them. But the biggest issue is the whole issue of the Palestinians. I heard Beinart debating on the radio, and his argument was so flawed, it must be contested. He basically says that he believes that Abbas is willing to make a deal and that it's Israeli intransigence, which is holding up the two-state solution. It is so far from reality, so far from the truth, it's uh, laughable. First of all, Abbas doesn't control Gaza, so what does he propose is going to happen with Gaza? Second of all, Abbas has worked out a deal with Hamas, the terrorists, which the United States agrees is a terrorist. Anybody who's willing to do that, he's going to make a deal with the Israelis. The only evidence he points to is to say that, yeah, security arrangements between the Israeli authorities and the Palestinian security forces are now good. Well, that's true, but what does that have to do with creating a state? Uh, Netanyahu has begged Abbas to simply say he's willing to recognize a Jewish state, and Abbas has never been able to say that. Beinart asserts that uh, the Palestinians would be willing to take a token repatriation of maybe 50,000 elderly Palestinians into uh, Israel, which is there's no evidence that he'd be able to do that. Abbas doesn't even control downtown the West Bank, let alone uh, in his own community, let alone the whole West Bank and Gaza. Uh, there's no evidence he's willing to make a deal, that he's able to make a deal. The guy was a Holocaust denier in his Ph.D. dissertation. What makes anybody think that the Palestinians will ever make a deal with Israel? They've obviously gone around Israel, trying to bypass Israel through the United Nations. Uh, and this whole idea that Israel building some cities in areas which everybody knows in any kind of final solution would go to Israel anyway, that's some kind of obstacle, is absurd. Uh, that, that even when the Israelis were not building, the Palestinians were intransigent. Whether the Palestinians are intransigent or not has nothing to do with Israelis building uh, across the supposed Green Line. And anyway, that land belongs to Israel. If it belongs to anybody, it certainly doesn't belong to Jordan. Uh, but Beiner's position is simply fatally flawed because he fails to take into account the complete intransigence of the Palestinians, their failure to abide by any of the uh, items of Oslo, the failure to renounce terrorism. In fact, they reward terrorists. They honor terrorists. And so there's completely no evidence that Beinart's position or that of anyone who says that a two-state solution, one Jew and one Arab, is realistic, is realistic. What is the evidence? And the overwhelming percentage of Israelis say that they would like to work out a deal if they had a partner with whom they could work out a deal, but they don't. And there's no evidence that they do. And Beinart is simply wishfully thinking that they do. And he quotes a lot of Israelis who say that that's possible. Well, where's the evidence for that? Of course, they're tired of war. They'd like it to be possible. But when uh, missiles are coming from Gaza, I mean, and uh, they're proposing turning over sovereign territory to um, a missile range to Tel Aviv Airport, which could shut down all of Israel forever, that's kind of that's ludicrous. Until there's a confirmed partner who, whose pledges can be honored, and don't forget, the minute you work out a pledge with one Arab dictator, five minutes later he could be shot, and there'll be another guy there who says the piece of paper isn't worth the price that was written on. I mean, we've seen that in the United States. Obama backtracked on a letter uh, that Bush wrote for Israel. And so if that happens in a democracy, it certainly could happen in a dictatorship. So that's the flaw of Beinart's basic position. Of course, he was wrong on the whole issue of alienation from Israel. Sure, there are liberal Jewish elites who are alienated, but they embrace every kind of anti-Jewish cause anyway. They're the first ones to condemn anything Jewish. And so you expect sort of that left, lefty Jewish group to uh, not be in favor of Israel because Israel is too successful and to favor the uh, the murderers and terrorists uh, in the world, the uh, Palestinian uh, uh, population that wants to destroy Israel and not live in peace and harmony with it. But as I said before, Israel is certainly willing to live in peace and harmony with the Palestinian state once there is any evidence that those people are interested 
and living in peace and harmony with Israel. So you know what you do? You, change, you take your textbooks that talk of vilify Jews in Israel and change them. You start putting Israel on the maps which show the Middle East. And then maybe you could be taken seriously as a possible peace partner.